Ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing a secret trick to win more chess games. That's as simple as I can describe it. If you want to get better at chess, you got to play a lot, you got to study a lot, you got to not make the same mistakes repeatedly. But there are few techniques at various levels that can just simply win you more games, particularly when you are losing. Let's jump into the four examples that I have for you. This entire video was inspired by this game. I have a subscriber on Twitch. His name is Sean. His username is Bob, aka Sean. He plays completely ridiculous chess. Let's take a look at this game. And I will show you this simple trick to win more chess games. Bob started this game, a blitz game against Harshil from India. It was a Karl Khan, and Bob got a great position early as he did everything you're supposed to do in the Karl Khan, which is develop your light squared bishop, put some pressure here, and put some pressure on the center. Knight c6, and life was good for Bob. Bob got absolutely perfect Karl Khan style position with knight d4, pressure here, threatening to damage the structure over here. And I mean, he was just doing everything right. His position was absolutely wonderful. He was about to play queen a5, and then capture this pawn, and then capture that pawn, and then get his rook over here. And I'm, I'm just really enjoying drawing arrows in different colors. <laughs> um, and his position was wonderful. Now you may be asking, well, Levy, what's the trick? I mean, it just looks like normal chess. The trick is, folks, sometimes you're going to get really, really bad positions in chess because you're a human. And you need to know how to fight back when you get a very bad position. And it involves your king. Pay attention. In this game, Bob's opponent went here and Bob had a little trap in this position. He can play knight takes e5. Knight e5 defends the queen and also wins him a pawn. And if his opponent takes this, he takes the queen. If his opponent moves, he just does this and this. But Bob accidentally hung his queen in one move. Bob spent 10 seconds on this move, eight seconds, hung his queen in one move. We've all been there. We have all been there. We've all blundered our queen. Now, a lot of you would hit the resign button. A lot of you would throw your phone. A lot of you would yell, smack yourselves, panic. But this is what you should do instead. When you blunder a queen, you should continue the game. You should try to keep as many pieces on the board as possible. Do not trade because the more pieces you trade, the less of a chance you have of coming back. Keep as many pieces on the board as possible. White here gets a little bit too excited, gives up the rook for the knight. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now you take with the rook, queen a7, and I mean, make no mistake, Bob is losing a lot. And the person with white here has a getaway square for their king, should advance their pawn, should try to trade rooks, try to trade bishop for knight like this, and just win the game. And for a little while, actually, white was doing exactly that. I mean, Bob doing his best, but it's really hard. a6, and a couple moves later, a7. Now, here I don't really understand why white did not play a7, a8, right? Like, why didn't white just play, like, just make a second queen? There's absolutely no danger here for white. Minute 40 on the clock. But Bob stops the queen and, uh, well, is a couple of moves away from losing. And now, folks, rook f7. Now I will show you how to win more games from completely lost and hopeless positions. There is an M in the evaluation. You don't know that when you're playing. You don't know that it's mate. But you know that the situation is dire. There is a technique in chess. This technique confuses everybody. It makes people completely not know what to do. And for about 90% of you watching this below the rating of 15, 1600, this technique will work in your online games. Maybe not over the board, but definitely online. And that technique is to run your king up the board. When all hope is lost, I'm not saying do that in the middle of an equal game, but when all hope is lost and you are about to just get checkmated, run the king up the board. I'm telling you right now, what you are about to witness is absolutely spectacular. King to g6. Of course this is losing. Of course it's lost. In fact, it's so lost that there's made in one. But it was lost even before the king run. And you might as well try to do something to fight back. If you do nothing, white just wins. White just wins. But when you run the king up the board, people get a little confused. They are used to checkmating a king in the corner. They're used to checkmate. But when the king starts running, People get very confused by the angles. And so check, rook g7 is made, but white misses that. And now the king escapes. 
White takes a pawn. White doesn't know. Do I check? Do I not check? Look how much time White is spending. All right. We go from like uh, rook b7. I mean, you know, uh, rook b7, queen f8, king jet, queen e8. White is just trying to give some checks and win material back. But like 14 seconds. 14. Where's the mate? 14 seconds. Where's the mate? I don't know. Where's the mate? Where's the mate? I don't, I don't see it. H how do I checkmate here? Queen e4. All right. I'm getting closer. But suddenly rook a1 check. Oh my god. Rook b1 back. 10 seconds spent on that move. 10 seconds. He doesn't trade. Now it's queen g4. Queen g4 is game over. However, because of this, white got scared and took and mated himself. White checkmated himself despite having a full 50 seconds on the clock and having made and won on the board multiple times. This only was possible because black decided, look, I can't just sit here and die. I need to run my king. Folks, you might think this is ridiculous, but I swear to you, this will win you more games. When all hope is lost, the position is completely lost. Run the king. Just do it. Don't believe me? Watch these other examples. This, is a ga this was another game sent to me. Look at their ratings. They are 1,700. Pay attention. E4, all right? White plays pretty solid opening, takes a lot of space, all right? D5 played, and uh, C5 is not a good move. I mean, white, white is, uh, opening is not the most important thing in the world. Queen F3, F5, black is crushing from the opening. All right, first of all, black, I don't know what black is doing here. 1700 on Lee Chess, can't even see bishop takes this rook. Uh, bishop takes, and this. All right, it's plus seven for black. It's plus seven, seven, it's plus seven. The game is over. I mean, at 1700, what are we even looking at, right? First of all, what on earth is white doing? Like, how does white not just go take, take, completely seize the center, you know, f4, knight f3, cat, like, how do you not just... How does white go from plus two to losing literally all their pieces? Now, if you're playing black here, just take the knight, just trade pieces, like, don't even think about it. Black plays knight d7, now white plays c6, knight f6. Bishop a3 and rook h1. All right. It's minus 10 at the 1700 level. So what do you do with white? You avoid trades. You try to create some counterplay. You actually have a pretty reasonable position. Black should, of course, go here. Infiltrate. Trade queens with you. All right. Knight e4. Okay. Bishop b2. Nice. Nah, queen d5. Yep. And queen a2. No. I mean, it's over. It's completely over. King e3. That's just a free bishop. Queen b2. It's, it's, it's minus 13. I mean, the game is over. Qu queen d2, queen f2, like, made, it, made in two. Rook g1 is played, and it's made in two. I told you. I mean, every single one of these videos, like, this is what's going to happen. Run your king. Run the king. Sometimes you're going to be forced to run the king, because if you don't, you're just going to get checkmated. Run the king. Black doesn't find queen d2. Black just doesn't find queen d2. It happens. Sometimes you just, you're winning, but you can't win. You, you can't seal the deal. Knight comes back. Now, I love this. Queen e5, g6, and now run? Find a way to run the king. White doesn't know what he's doing anymore, sacks the rook. It's M in the evaluation at the 1700 level. You know how many, you know how many people watching this right now are nowhere near 1700? That is a very legitimate rating. King f4. Now, if I'm playing black here, just give checks. Just give checks. I mean, just give a check. Like, force the king back, and, and white is lost. But when you run the king, as I told you, people panic. They don't know what to do. You take a random pawn, and instead of ch taking this, or checking you, or mating you in a variety of different ways, or forking your queen and king to force a queen trade, force the queens off, you will never, ever lose. But people malfunction. They just, they don't know what to do. So they go here. That is a discovered check, but it allows your king to infiltrate. And folks, if you think that what you are about to witness is exactly what you are about to witness, if you're looking at this right now and going, there, there's just no way, right? Yes, 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 queen g7, mate! 16 points of material up! I mean, are you, are you kidding me? What? Do you know how many mates there are in this position? 50,000! Any move, any move, by accident you will checkmate your opponent. I mean, rook f8, queen d4, knight e4, just so... Instead, black just...
Mate! Mate! 1700! I mean, I'm not exaggerating, okay? This method of making comebacks from completely lost positions, run the just run it as far as possible. Just go. Just go. You will not regret it. That th this position has a ridiculous. This is the last example I'm going to show you. This one is so so disgusting. I'm going to show you this one. This is a 1600 game. All right. This one starts e4. All right. Relatively normal stuff. Vienna f4. Love this. Shout out to my Brazilian here playing the Vienna. Vienna enthusiast gets a great position. I mean, I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what. I don't, I, I don't know who taught him to take with the pawn there. Let me tell you, it definitely wasn't me. Here's an example of a Gotham sub who gets my course, gets a winning position on move eight, and then does this and is now losing. <laughs> like, this is right here. This is a chess study 101. Get a winning position on move seven in an opening, lose it on move eight. Uh, bishop h6 is obviously not a good move. Takes bishop c1, ef6, bishop b2, and white is completely lost. Completely lost. One point away from being 1660. You're telling me a 1600 rated player hung a piece on move six? Actually, move 10. Uh, knight d5, I like this move. Now it takes takes. Okay, I like that move because this is kind of annoying for black. It's kind of annoying to deal with. And, you know, white's king is relatively safe. White can try to consolidate. But, of course, black can play like knight e5, hit this, hit this, get the king to safety, kick the knight out. Okay, black plays knight e5 indeed, and then takes. Great. Now kick the knight out with the move c6. Excellent. 97 looks scary, but it's not check. And um, yeah, this is a little bold, uh, d5, because what it does is it actually allows the white queen to enter, and that's actually very dangerous, uh, which is exactly what subscriber does. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, Levy, didn't you say that in this game, uh, you know, you, you're supposed to run your king when you're losing, right? And well, to be honest with you, uh, yeah, uh, black gets a completely lost position here because of double check. Look at that. Absolutely insane move. King g8. And now this is relatively easy. You just check and you can just be patient because the king cannot go to the G file. So the rook will always cut hit there and you're threatening knight C6, discovered attack. It's just a crushing position. You can go here, take, just winning. However, uh, my dear subscriber um, thought that he had a smothered mate here. He thought that he was going to play queen F8, rook here, and he thought this was checkmate, which is adorable. Um, now, you know, if, if, if this was the position, he would be right. He would have played an absolutely legendary smothered mate. That is a smothered mate indeed. Hits this, check. Problem with the way my subscriber did it is he just hung his queen because that can just be taken. And now black is just up a rook. And since black is up a rook, what black should do next is take a pawn, but be careful. Rook g1 is mate. It's never too late to blunder checkmate in one move. So you want to make some room for your king, bring the king, take a pawn, rook e8, rook g8, etc. Black does that. f6, yeah. Take, take, take. And now you should bring the king, king f7, and take the pawn and win the game. A little tricky, a little tricky. So what did my subscriber do? Did my subscriber rage or get mad or resign? Ba -ba 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 -ba. No. He ran his king. It took a little time. He first brought his pawns together. Right, he, he, uh, king e3. And then king f3. And king g4. Started running his king. Here's the thing. If white plays d7, black will take. And uh, essentially what will happen in this, in this position is uh, something like this. Where this is like a best case scenario for white. And maybe drawable. But probably black will win all the pawns and end up going on to win. So black goes rook g8. King here. And rook c5, king h6, rook f5, and I mean, black is completely winning. It's mate in two in a couple of moves. Rook g6, king h7, rook h5 is mate. So white goes here. And now rook g g5, you still cannot promote anything because that's checkmate. Rook h1 and rook d5, okay? The game is over. The game is absolutely lost. Rook takes d6, a5, rook a5. When suddenly... When suddenly, black, so enamored with the presence of this king, started focusing all of his attention on it. Okay? Started focusing all his attention on the king and forgot not just that there was a pawn promoting. There's a pawn promoting 
And then it's made. <laughs> with, with two minutes on the clock, Black allowed a promotion. Instead of just standing in front of the pawn and winning the game with F4 and just... And this only happened because White, from a totally lost position, decided, well, I got nothing else. I'm going to lose all my pawns. Let me just run my king up. And I mean, Black could have played anything. Black could have played absolute. Black could have just ran the pawn. Oh, Black just needed to avoid this, right? And he didn't. He got, he got a little distracted, started attacking the king, and then just forgot about the pawn and lost. But if you think this is bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. This is the last game that I will show you if you don't believe me. This is a Vienna. Not the most accurate move order against d6. I recommend bishop c4, d3, f4, but fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, the opponent plays knight d4. Of course, just queen d4 here. And white is winning. White just has a completely winning position. So, uh, long castle, it's plus nine. I mean, white's position is incredible. White, white needs to cast. White's getting a little bit too aggressive here. Um, rook takes g7 is also a completely winning move. So crushing, just absolutely crushing. White decides to trade, give away a pawn, doesn't castle, suddenly counterplay comes in. Uh, rook d1 is a decent move, and yeah, king f1 is nice, take, take, and the bishop is hanging, and they give a check, and give a check, and bishop f2, and, um, it's a very, very back-and-forth battle, like, white, it, back and forth in terms of it looks like white is completely winning, uh, and now white blunders rook d1. So white played 20 tilting good moves, as you do when you're 900, you make a blunder and you're almost lost, because you have to go here, and I mean, it, it, it just looks like you're getting mated now. It just looks like the game is over. And it is. The game is over. You're not getting mated, but the game is lost. Um, so your king now gets hunted and just starts running. And like I said, sometimes you are forced to run. Sometimes you just, you just go for a run, okay? And uh, rookie one, king f2, rookie two. King g3, king g4. And the white king is just going for a run. Now black has rook h2 and bishop g3. So now black is completely winning. All right? Now what white should do here is prevent the pawn from queening, right? And just keep the king around. Do some stuff with the king. And that is exactly what white does. White just bounces the king around the board. Just king f7. All right, a couple moves later, we're going to move it again. Rook g7, rook g8, they're creating some threats. Rook c8, all right. At some point, we're going to start getting the king involved again. And the king moving around the board is so tricky because you're just looking and you're like, I wonder where, like, where the king's going to go to next. And yes, there is low time. Look how disgusting the white king ends up in this game. King d5, b3, king c4. The only legal move in this position is for black to play b5. And the only legal move in this position is for black to play b4. And a takes b4 is mate. There is... N black is forced to checkmate himself. Black has one legal move in this position. It's this... Black has one legal move in this position, and it's checkmating yourself. That is why you need to run your king when the position is bad. You will win games you have no business winning. Now get out of here.